Hi friends! Have you seen people showing off really cool mock-ups of their pin designs on Kickstarter or on Instagram? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So you can pre-sell your pins, you can show mock-ups of pin club stuff, you can get Kickstarter campaigns started, all of that stuff. So stick around, I'm going to show you exactly what to do for that. As always, go ahead and click that bell or subscribe to my channel if you love making pins, collecting pins, seeing pin collections. If you're just into enamel pins, um, this is the place, so you should subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to make a super professional, really cool mock-up to share on Instagram or pre-sales or all that stuff. This is really important if you want to give a more professional look, if you don't have any physical products to show yet, if you want to test out new designs, all that kind of stuff. So this is a really great skill to know. So first thing we're going to talk about is why you would even want to make a mock-up and why it really is so important. The first thing is um, you want to be able to pre-sell your pins. So I like to do pre-sells. I'm not a huge Kickstarter fan. We'll talk about Kickstarter in a minute though. <laughs> but you've heard me talk about it um, before. But I love to pre-sell my pins. So you can either take your original illustration and the image that you want to use to send your manufacturer or you can kind of spruce it up, give it a kind of metal look, give it a little bit more dimension so people can really envision it before they buy it. Because you want to show everyone as close as you possibly can get to the final product so they are confident in what they're buying, especially with a pre-sale, um, since you don't have any photos of the physical item to show. Okay, now to Kickstarter. Kickstarter has to have images with their stuff. You have to know what you're getting when you are backing a, a, a Kickstarter campaign. So mock-ups are really, really important, whether it's just the plain illustration or something a little bit more elevated. I think um, it's always a good idea to have something a little bit more professional, polished. It just really inspires confidence in your buyer or your backer in Kickstarter's case. And it's just really nice for social media. If you don't have a ton of pins, if you don't have a lot of inventory to share on social media, then a mock-up is really good to kind of share. It just looks a little bit nicer. You can, um, I don't know, it just looks a little bit more professional. If you're like, here's, a, here's the pin I'm working on, or if you want to kind of show things side by side, if you want to do polls for what to do. I don't know, it's just another thing because we always need new content to put up on Instagram to get our customers going. I actually have a bunch of Instagram tips for um, pin makers specifically, so you can check that out. Um, but if you're looking for content ideas, uh, something else to share on your feed, a mock-up for something that's coming out soon is another great idea. Now, I'm curious, have you ever used mock-ups before to share pins or sell pins that um, haven't come in yet? I would love to know if this is something that you are curious about and um, have used before. So let me know in the comments below and we can talk about kind of what we like about mock-ups. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. This is everything you need to know. So first things first, I want you to check out this video. That's the video about how I um, kind of vector, <laughs> that's the word, how I vector my, my pins. So you can see the full process, um, exactly what I do. The biggest thing that you want to remember is make sure that all of your strokes are expanded and um, kind of merged into Pathfinder. And I, you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> okay, so now let's hop into Illustrator. Okay, now we are going to make our mock-up in Illustrator. So Illustrator can be really finicky, so please be sure to follow my instructions um, to the T. It is kind of a pain to do these, but if you really wanna do pre-orders, pre-sales, all that stuff that I talked about before, it's really helpful. Okay, so we have this template. You can actually download this exact template. This is what I send to my manufacturers, and uh, you can download that below if you'd like to use it. Um, I am going to take this finished image. I've got all of the outlines, all of the strokes are expanded. This is the full on image that I sent to my manufacturers, and I am gonna bring it in here to this blank document. Now this document is just 11 by, or it's eight and a half by 11 doesn't really matter. Um, you're working in a vector, so it truly does not matter what size it is. So I'm going to resize it just for this exercise. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. 
And then I'm gonna come over, use the Pathfinder, make it all one color. And then I'm gonna make a new layer, bring it all the way down, pop that in the second layer here, and then just kind of lock it and forget about it for now. Don't worry about it. Now, I'm gonna make another layer just bring it on top here to make it easy. And then I'm gonna take the outline layer up here and separate it. Now, you wanna do for this, you wanna make sure you've ungrouped it. So that's Shift Command G. And now you want to go down and make a compound path. This is important for the clipping mask, just so Illustrator knows it, it treats compound paths like it's a single path. It's confusing and frustrating, but you have to do it. So don't forget. <laughs> All right, make. You can also do Command-8, or I think on a PC it's Control-8. Okay, so it doesn't look like we've done anything with that ungrouping and compound path, but I promise that we have. <laughs> now you're gonna come over, make another layer, and then just do a circle. Now to get the metal effect that you want, you can either draw it on here or you can come over to your swatches palette and go to colors. And then we've got gradients. So this is really great. So you can come down here to metals and you'll see there are lots of different metals. So there's gold, silver, uh, darker stuff, um, darker golds, rose golds, all kinds of stuff for that. So no matter what color you need, they've got pretty much all you need for any kind of metal finish. So I'm going to pick this one and I am going to rotate it just a little bit because I think it's a little bit more natural. Okay, so now I'm going to move that underneath. I'm going to come over here, toss that there. And then we've got, select them both, Command-7. Ta-da! Now it looks like gold. So if you want to move it around, you can come into your layers and choose your gold. So you can move it this way. You can make it bigger if you want. You can smoosh it around however you want to get the look that you are wanting to have. So I think that's really great. So you can leave this as is, or let's go ahead and lock these just so we're not messing with them. We're gonna come back to this friend. So this is really great because you can match that up. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. And then you can kind of push it down. I like to kind of go I don't know, five spaces, it doesn't really matter. Change it, make it look a little bit darker. We'll come down here, a little darker, a little grayer to simulate a shadow. So you can do something like that. You can also change the shadow to match your background. You can change it to do whatever you want. There's lots of really great ways you can manipulate that. So you can leave this as is if that's your aesthetic as well. Um, you can mess around with the colors, choose whatever you want. This is just a really great way to make it look 3D. You can also kind of scooch it over if you want to give the look of it at an angle. Um, whatever you want to do, whatever looks good to you. You can also get down there. Um, I like to use this shape. It gets a little complicated if you want to do a drop shadow with your clipping mask shape and all that. It's It makes a drop shadow around all of the stuff that you've made a clipping mask. So I like to have this duplicate layer to mess with. So if you want to make a drop shadow for this, then you come up to effect and then stylize and drop shadow. Now this one isn't as easy to use. Let's click preview so we see. It's not as easy to use as in Photoshop, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but you can choose the mode. There's lots of different um, modes. This is the same as uh, in Photoshop. I mean, I think multiply is fine. You can play around with it, see whatever you like. Um, but the biggest thing to remember is have the X and Y offset. So the X moves it to the side. Mm -hmm. And then Y moves it up and down, just like math class. 
So it's just a fun way. You can do it like it's kind of raised a little bit, or you can do it like there's a shadow. You can change the blur to um, be not quite as harsh or as wide. So that's really fun to play with too. And then you can also change the color of this if you want to match it. Um, multiply is really good because it'll um, you can kind of see the background through. So if you have a colored background, uh, multiply is a good one. And then you can also click OK. Ooh, that wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> let's go up here. Um, let's see. Stylize, drop shadow, and then preview. Yeah, we don't need it. We don't need the blur that huge. Thank you very much. There we go. Now, that's great. But if you don't really like how it's sitting still, then you can take the shape and mess with it a little more. So I like to make it a little bit smaller. And that way you can kind of manipulate it a little bit more however you want. Yeah. So that is how you make a mock-up in Illustrator. Ta-da! And that's how you do it. Easy peasy. Well, as long as you follow the instructions, it's easy peasy. It gets a little bit tricky, but um, once you know the process, you're good to go. You can adjust this however you want. It's, um, it's super versatile, and it's a really important thing to know how to do if you want to kind of take your mock-ups to another level, if you want to have a new type of content to share, if you want to have an extra level of kind of detail on your mock-ups, it's really great to do. And as I said before, you can click down below if you want that exact template that I use to send to my manufacturers. That really is, I say it all the time, it is the exact thing I send to my manufacturers. I've been using the same template for like three or four years now. <laughs> and um, it is manufacturer approved, everything you need. So be sure to download that below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. Um, if you're into pins, please share it with your pin maker friends if you think it's useful for them. I think it's a really great skill to have. And um, be sure to put, what's an emoji that we could do? I don't know. I still like, let's do this guy. Let's just do a big beefy, ooh, or the beefy leg. Do the beefy leg because it's weird and people will be very confused. So if you got to the end of this video, I was thinking like, confident, yeah, you can do it. Make a mock-up, no problem. And then I just went weird with a beefy leg. So give me either an arm or a leg, you know, one of the two. <laughs> and then we can confuse everyone on YouTube and it'll be great. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>